The next bill on the calendar for today is House File 3765. The clerk will report the bill. <clears throat> House File number 3765, number two on the calendar for the day, an act relating to natural resources, the second engrossment. I recognize the author of the bill, the member from Dakota, Representative Hansen, to explain the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, House File 3765 is the LCCMR uh, Appropriations Bill. Uh, as you may know, the LCCMR is the Legislative and Citizen Commission on Minnesota Resources. It makes recommendations relating to the expenditures for the Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund. The Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund is your lottery money. So when you see those ads on TV uh, for the lottery and the money going to the environment, this is the Environmental and Natural Resources Trust Fund. This year, it is allocating $70.88 million from the trust fund. This provision and this bill allocates the money based on merit. Now the LCCMR is a 17-member commission and it takes 12 votes for a formal recommendation. The bill in front of you is the proposal. There were 11 proposals trying to get to 12 votes. This was the one that received the highest number of votes. It received 10 votes in favor and seven votes against. So what's in the bill? Well, this bill makes investments in addressing prions, PFAS, and pollinators. In terms of prions, it establishes $3.8 million at the University of Minnesota for a center on prion research. It has several provisions, which you'll hear of later, relating to PFAS, polyfluoroalkaline substances, and then also several provisions relating to pollinators. In addition to that, it spends over $6 million for the Minnesota Terrestrial Invasive Terrestrial Plants and Pest Center, and it provides dollars to look at increasing diversity in environmental teaching and environmental careers. Beyond that, the Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund provides money for state parks and trails, scientific and natural area acquisitions, local projects, uh, native prairie stewardship, and prairie bank state acquisition. I want to make sure before we uh, start the debate on the bill today that I thank Ms. Becca Nash and her very capable staff from the Legislative and Citizen Commission on Minnesota Resources. Michael Varian, Diana Griffith, Rory Anderson, Corey Layfield, and Mike Campana. They work for us and they work with us. I would encourage you to go uh, into, the, into the lower floor on the state office building, check in with the capable folks from the LCCMR. They're ready to help and explain any of the programs and projects that we've invested going back many, many years. And with that, uh, I'm open for questions. There are no amendments at the desk, so the clerk will give the bill its third <clears throat> reading. Third reading, House File number 3765. Third reading. Discussion to the bill. I recognize the member from Kuchiching, Representative Eklund. Well, thank you, members. I want to talk to just one portion of this bill. And you, we've been talking for the last five years about chronic waste and disease. I know you're getting sick of it, but I'm going to keep talking about it. Members, there's an attachment, or there's a, a handout that I had sent to you about an article that just came out the other day. It's in your packets. And I just want to talk about some of the points of this article. The study has uh, major implications for public health and the need for aggressive CWD management. The authors conclude that, there, that our findings strongly suggest that CWD is an actual public health risk. The research teams used CWD prions from white, uh, prions from white-tailed deer and showed that they could cause human prions to misfold into a disease-causing form. They used, a, they used a mouse model that had the human prion knocked into its genome. The study suggests that current diagnostic assays, IHC and ELISA, and I didn't, I gotta uh, let you know, I don't know what those acronyms are, might be unable to, cre to detect a CWD-caused disease in humans, and that a CWD-caused human disease could be similar to genetic degenerative brain disorders. 
The authors also noted that white-tailed deer, CWD prions, the same that are in the upper Midwest, have now been shown to be more effective at causing human prions to misfold in several experiments. Members, Mr. Speaker, CWD is getting to be and is a serious issue, and I applaud the members of the LCCMR that put this, into the, this funding into the bill, and I ask you to support the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I recognize the member from Hennepin, Representative Acom. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I rise today in support of House File 3765. Um, I'm honored to be a member of LCCMR, and so I get the great pleasure of hearing about many of the different provisions that are included in this bill today. Um, we are so fortunate to live in a state that values our natural resources and uh, is willing to invest in it. So. Um, there are so many strong provisions within the bill, and what I appreciate most is that they're based on science. And um, we know that climate change is an issue that is really important to Minnesotans, and I'm glad that there are several provisions in the bill that address this. Um, there's a provision that, um, let's see, looks at climate that, um, and the increase in floodplain and forest resilience. Um, there's another provision recognizing that climate, cha that climate change is warming our lakes and there's an impact on our game fish populations. We know how important fishing is to Minnesotans and our, our, certainly our summer and winter recreation. Um, we know our state is becoming warmer and wetter, so there's a provision to provide information and resources so that communities and individuals can guide um, adaptation and planning. There's also a provision to work with local communities to determine the causes of increased flooding and the most cost-effective solutions. We know all of our communities are struggling with large rainfall events, and so this is a really important provision. Um, because we know how important renewable energy is, there's, a, um, there's funding for the uh, University of Minnesota to develop an efficient, low-cost solar cell and a feasibility study for using Iron Range resources to make this product. There are just so many, countless provisions within the bill that are important. And again, based on science, I really in encourage everybody to support this bill. Thank you. I recognize the member from Ramsey, Representative Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate the opportunity to step forward to speak in favor of House File 3765. One of the big things that I appreciate that is in this bill is the opportunity here to do the research to figure out how do we address the problem of PFAS in our, in our water system and throughout our state. One of the problems that we have right now is we know that PFAS is a forever chemical, and once it contaminates something, we have that problem going forward. In the Northeast Metro and, and the East Metro, we have large parts of the area where they can no longer drink the water because of PFAS contamination. And this bill does several things to try to address that issue. Number one, it allows for research to try to figure out how do we try to destroy PFAS so that we can make sure that it does not get into our system. It also provides for research to figure out if it's in our drinking water, how can we better get it out of our drinking water? Because right now we've got an East Metro community that one of the contributing reasons that they cannot do any more building or construction of new housing is because their water is so contaminated with PFAS, they don't have enough clean water to provide for new housing units. Uh, another thing that this does is it takes a look at the system is how can we make sure that PFAS is not entering the system? Taking a look, how is it in the plastics? Where is it entering our sources? And trying to get it removed at that point in time. So by supporting this bill, we're supporting a way to do the research to get PFAS, a forever chemical, out of our system and protect our water supplies out there. So I ask for everyone for a green vote to help combat the problem of PFAS. I recognize the member from Hennepin, Representative Morrison. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I rise in support of House File 3765, the 2022 LCCMR Appropriations Bill. I want to thank Chair Hansen for his leadership in the Environment and Natural Resources Committee, of course, and specifically in carrying and championing this bill. We're all well aware by now of the precipitous decline of insect and pollinator populations and the catastrophic ramifications of those declines if they are not addressed and curbed. It's critical we support creative problem solving to address the many challenges we face in regard to protecting our natural resources, land, water, climate, and pollinators. And this LCCMR bill has provisions that do all those things. I'm especially pleased that it includes projects 
that aim to help address the pollinator emergency our state faces. These projects include investments and in studies to investigate how prescribed fires affect ground nesting bees, money to develop a state pollinator conservation plan, a pilot project to create pollinator habitat at closed landfill sites and the closed landfill program. These are some examples of the creative problem solving that the LCCMR affords our state, and I'm proud to support it, and I urge all members to as well, um, as the provisions in this bill impact and benefit the entire state. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further discussion to the bill, the member from Crow Wing, Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I was hoping that the bill author would yield to a couple of questions. He will yield to a couple of questions. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Representative Hanson, I've heard a number of your members stand up today, and they have one by one mentioned in a number of different ways. They're rising in support of the LCCMR bill. And I was hoping that you could provide some clarification, because my understanding was that, and we have a lot to discuss, but I'm just going to lead with this. My understanding was that the LCCMR did not actually provide an official recommendation to the legislature that their vote did not reach the threshold necessary to achieve an actual LCCMR recommendation. Could you just clarify that for the body, Representative? The member from Dakota, Representative Hanson. Thank you, uh, um, Mr. Speaker and Representative Heinzman. I think I mentioned that uh, during my introduction, that uh, this, uh, this is the appropriations bill. I think I was pretty clear in not calling it the recommendations bill. It's an appropriations bill, and this reflects the merit-based scores that received 10 votes. There were 11 different efforts to try to get to 12 votes. None of those succeeded, but what's in front of you today is what received 10 votes, 10 votes for and seven against. So it is the appropriations bill for the Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, and thank you, Representative Hanson. It appears that some of your members might actually have been a little confused, and so I'm glad you clarified that. Maybe they missed that. I wanted the body to know, uh, just as you stated in your earlier remarks and then restated just now, that this is not the official recommendation as the, the, the statutory or the requirement of the LCCMR group in providing recommendations to us. And I do have, like I had suggested earlier, Mr. Speaker, a number of questions. Um, in fact, two out of the last three years, we haven't had official recommendations from the LCCMR. And I'm hoping that that's not a trend, but I think that people are starting to wonder if, if there's something wrong. And you mentioned Director Nash and her excellent work and her staff, how hard they, they work to manage all of the projects and, and bring that process uh, to the members of the LCCMR the commissioners, um, and they're doing phenomenally well. But I'm concerned that we're seeing a trend and that we aren't able to come to agreement. And there's a number of projects that I'm probably going to bring up and we're going to discuss a little bit that may be a part of the reason for that, at least in my opinion. I could be wrong. But if you could give us a better idea of what you think maybe, uh, Representative Hansen, is the reason for what appears to be some dysfunction. Representative Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Heinzman. I think we had this discussion in committee, and I agree with you. It's not working. It used to be that we could come to a unanimous agreement. And I'm using we here because this before the LCCMR, it was the LCMR. So in the early 2000s, there was an attempt at reform. And I think I will, I will stay, and I think others will say, that reform has not worked. It worked for maybe a dozen years, but it hasn't worked for several years. Now, why is that? That reform put citizens on the commission, and then it provided for legislative support. There are 17 members. And that legislative membership fluctuates based on control. The legislative branch and this is the challenge with a number of commissions and boards where you have legislative and executive functions combined. So you have executive appointments, you have legislative appointments. I can only compare with other commissions I'm on, the Legislative Audit Commission. 
And perhaps instead of providing for a partisan advantage of whoever's in control, we have an equal number of Republicans and Democrats as the legislative members. So there's not an advantage. So that the partisanship doesn't seep in to the discussion. Secondly, I think that we need to look at the terms of office. That the legislative appointments that were made were four-year terms. So you may have someone who makes an appointment in the last year of uh, control, and that person serves for four years, and the control may cha have changed during that four years. So does it actually reflect representation? Should we have more legislators, more citizens? Should we have eight citizens, each, each appointed for a congressional district, so that we can encourage more diversity, we can encourage more fair, fairness, we can do things differently? So as I've mentioned in committee, and I'll state here in front of the House, I think we can do things differently. I think we will have to. Because before the Environmental Trust Fund is brought back to the voters, we're going to have to fix this. I think another thing that we're going to have to do is pass a bill this year to demonstrate that whatever our partisan differences are either in this body or in the other body or between the bodies, that we can work this out and get the appropriations passed and sent to the governor, that we can do our job. So I'm hopeful we can do that in the open, that we can have conference committees like we used to, that we can have those debates. And that means there's things in here, there's things in here I didn't support strongly, there's things I do support strongly. That's what every one of us has to make those decisions when they're voting. But on the whole, this is a good bill. It's got some great things in there. Could it be better? Yes. Every piece of legislation could be better. I think we need to reform the LCCMR. I think we need to do that before we bring the question to the ballot, to the people of Minnesota, to say that we could do better. We're going to demonstrate we're going to do better. We're going to make those changes. And that we can do our job as legislators by finding the things that we can agree on and pass those into law, send them to the governor this year, and show that we can do our work. I know, Representative Heinzman, that will be very difficult because what the Senate is going to pass is going to be very different than this. Very, very, very different than this. So what, we're, what I'm bringing to you here, again, is the items, are the items that got the most votes. They got a majority, but not the supermajority. And maybe the supermajority was too much to ask in today's divided climate. But it's what we have right now, and I think it demonstrates to us we can do things differently. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, and thank you, Representative Hansen, for the answer. Uh, we definitely agree that we have a, a challenge in the organization of how the LCCMR bill is created. And I think we both have some ideas as to what we might do to help restore uh, a presentation, potentially being able to continue to come to the legislature, because maybe without that, uh, we could be looking at a continuation of a trend. And that, that's going to quite honestly do, just as you were describing, create a scenario where Senate's going to have their version. Representative Hansen, you have your version of what you think the bill should be. And that's a recipe for gridlock. And that's really unfortunate, because we're all looking at things that we like. And, and I'm going to point out a few of those things, just as some of your members did, Representative Hansen, and some things we don't like. And we'd like there to be able to be all green on that board. And some of the bills that I wanted, the or bills, some of the provisions that I'd like to point out that raise some eyebrows, some question marks. Uh, for example, uh, line. 2.8 through 2.17, we see efficiency of urban archery hunting to manage deer, $300,000.
I mean, maybe that's something that we need, but it does raise some eyebrows. We have uh, on lines 3.21 starting through 3.32. Status of Minnesota blueberries and related berry species, almost $200,000. I mean, I'm sure there's folks that aren't real uh, clear on what processes affect blueberries, but you know, it just again, I'm not totally clear on, on how that, uh, how that uh, is deserving, and, and maybe there can be some explanation, but I'll continue. Lines 4.10 through 4.15. Oful wildlife watching. For those of you at home, I think that might be gut piles. How do hunters' uh, provisions impact scavengers? Uh, maybe, maybe that is a almost five hundred thousand project, five hundred thousand dollar project that we have to have, Representative Hanson. I'm not sure. Uh, you said it got a majority of those votes of the LCCMR commissioners, but you know, I, I think that it's fair to say that virtually every predator hunter in the state who may hunt over a offal. Uh, can tell you. They have a camera and they know exactly what's visiting that site. I'm pretty sure they could offer that data to the university or whoever else may be a part of this study at virtually no cost. A few other projects that caught my eye briefly as I was going through the bill. Uh, almost $250,000 for bird watching. Uh, I think there's probably opportunities to see birds that doesn't require $250,000, but maybe not. And I'll just end with another project and uh, line 13.21 through 13.29. Uh, this is kind of interesting to me. LCCMR stories, sharing Minnesota's biggest environmental investment at uh, the Science Museum of Minnesota. $538,000. Well, quite honestly, it's a promotional for the LCCMR, which is the subject of some discussion already here at the beginning of, of the bill presentation as to whether or not it's working or not working. Maybe we should determine what the future is of the LCCMR before we spend over half a million dollars promoting an organization that may need some significant reform. Those dollars aren't going towards the projects that I think both you, Representative Hansen and I, really appreciate seeing that affect the environment and natural resources subject area, and that I think that the folks that supported the creation of the Environment Natural Resource Trust Fund and its ongoing efforts across the state were envisioning was a promotional for what may be a question mark as to whether or not this form, this form of uh, distribution of dollars and projects and so on and so forth is actually working. So for those reasons and uh, a number of others, I could go on for quite a while. Um, I have questions and I'm not going to be able to support the bill today, Representative Hansen. Um, I do share in uh, some of the conversation we brought up projects that work on, uh, work on CWD. Uh, the creation of, of a lab to work on and study that issue in Minnesota. I think that's brilliant. It's a great idea. We need more research before we're enacting more regulatory uh, statute and figure out what the solutions are. I think that's a great idea in this, in this legislation. But it unfortunately doesn't outweigh some of the question marks. And I, I, I hope that when the bill comes back and you're able to negotiate something that you, uh, that, rep that you, Representative Hansen, and, and those others uh, in the other body can agree on with the, in the conference committee, I'm assuming that will be formed. I'm hoping that it's something that I can support at that time. So thank you, Mr. Speaker. Third discussion to the bill, Representative Green. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'm gonna be very brief because uh, Representative Hines been hit most of the talking points, but I do want to do an overview of the bill just as a whole 
And just to give you an idea why some of us get frustrated with it, and especially particular uh, the folks in my area, when we see some of the ways that the money is spent, you know, we hear about the, the $300,000 studies and the and uh, study after study. There's looks like almost $4 million near for more land acquisition. And I, I wish you would look through this and and you may have a project in your area that you like, but as a whole, when you're spending this kind of money, you know, almost $71 million, and we have a lot of people across Minnesota that are hurting. We have, uh, every year we have more and more people that uh, are driven off their property because they can't pay the property tax. Our solution isn't to, isn't to maybe try to get some more land out there and, and beef up the property tax in our areas. Our solution is to take stack tax dollars from someone else and give, give uh, local government aid or, or uh, other funding uh, to pay back the property tax, but we never solved the problem. We have folks out there dealing with the inflation now and that are going to the grocery store and can't buy half the food they used to buy. I had a, senior, a couple senior citizens uh, that I talked to here this last weekend that uh, went to the grocery store and their, their bill doubled, but their Social Security and their small pension didn't and so they're cutting back on food, not to mention all the other things. And yet we're sitting here debating on whether or not we should spend $300,000 for a study to do, to see if, we, if, if archery is gonna work to take care of deer or, or if we wanna spend $4 million to purchase more land for a trail. And it's, uh, it's almost futile, it seems like, to sit here and, and argue these things this bill is, you know, the money that we could be doing with this for real projects, and this is in every, every aspect, whether it be legacy, LCCMR, uh, even in the environmental fund. There are projects out there that are good, and uh, there are projects out there that really seem to be a huge waste of money. And this bill seems to me to be a huge waste of money. So I won't support this bill, and I, I hope that uh, I hope that when it comes back from the Senate, it looks considerably different. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further discussion to the bill. I recognize the member from Ramsey, Representative Becker Finn. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to ground us first in uh, what the statute and what, what the Constitution actually says. And just want to remind folks that this is... Uh, so whether you call it the LCCMR or the ENRTF, uh, the Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund bill, um, this is something that the voters of Minnesota decided was important and, uh, you know, passed overwhelmingly. And I don't think when the voters passed this, this amendment that uh, they were thinking that um, we wouldn't spend the money because we had, were two votes short in a super majority major like I, I it's important that we get those dollars out there because that's really what the public wanted when when they voted for this and I also want to remind folks that uh, the trust fund dollars cannot be used to substitute traditional sources of funding that the DNR or other uh, agencies would typically use. And so when we, this, this is where the innovation happens uh, because the DNR and their normal budget processes, um, these are things that are supposed to be outside of, uh, in addition to uh, what we would normally fund in a regular environmental bill. So I think um, you know, the innovation and in trying new things like that, that's the whole point of the LCCMR slash ENRTF bill. And I did want to highlight a couple of things that I think are really important. And also um, on on the, the piece about about blueberries and other native berries, I, you, you know, I guess to, to educate my colleagues, uh, you know, as uh, the native folks in our state have, uh, they have a right, our treaty rights allow people to continue to harvest and uh, forage for food. Um, and that would include blueberries. And so I think using this money to make sure that land management practices aren't negatively impacting um, our native berry populations is not a silly thing. It's actually really important and I'm glad that it's included. Um, you know, blueberries might be a, a fun thing and it's our state, state berry, but um, it's also something that's, you know, a food that's been eaten by our native populations for 
forever. So I think um, I'm really glad that's that's incorporated in this bill. Uh, as to the the urban archery project, uh, I I know maybe not everybody lives in the suburbs, but uh, having deer issues in our communities is a real problem and cities are spending money on this. Um, and so I think figuring out what is the best way to do this, what's the most effective way. Um, I know uh, myself, I uh, see plenty of deer. I've seen bigger uh, bucks in Roseville than I have where I deer hunt. And, you know, if there are ways that we can figure out how to do this so that the people who actually live in the place where the deer are, are the people who can benefit um, from the harvesting of those deer to control the population. Like, I, I'm glad we're talking about that. But again, that's exactly the kind of project we want to include. Um, finally, I just want to hit on, uh, there are several provisions in this bill that are really important when it comes to getting young people outdoors and engaging people in environmental learning. Um, not only does that help kids do better in school, it helps our young people be more engaged in their world around them and to get outdoors. You know, there are benefits educationally besides what falls within the, the realm of, you know, the environment, uh, when we think of environmental issues, but also, you know, if you learn to understand and love our natural world, you are much more likely to want to protect it in the future. And so um, you're also more likely to want to hunt and fish and spend time outside and uh, make use of all of our public spaces and um, become the future hunters and anglers uh, in our state. So I think that's really important and I'm glad that it's included. Um, overall, it's a good bill. And uh, again, that that pre on research, uh, as, as Chair Eklund said, um, uh, Representative Eklund said, you know, we're uh, we're sick of talking about CWD, too, um, but it's not getting better. And we're actually learning more about uh, how important it is to address this issue and um, setting up this pre on research center in Minnesota. We, we could be leading the nation in uh, taking care of CWD and other pre on diseases. And, and again, I think that's exactly the kind of thing we should be doing with these dollars. So uh, encourage members to support this um, not perfect, but very good bill. Thank you. I recognize the member from Stearns, my seatmate, Representative Tice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I've been on LCCMR for a couple of years, and it certainly has been a frustrating task. There are really a lot of projects that I think are worthy. And then there's some I really do question. And what really is kind of upsetting is there isn't a lot of compromise on what we want to see and what we want to do. A lot of it is done on a score, and it's easy to see where the line gets drawn. I had to fight big time for a walking trail for seniors in Sauk Rapids. They're ready to go with that. It's beneficial to everybody, but it wasn't going to make it. We shouldn't have to fight for a lot of these that are ready to go that we can see the benefits for all ages of a community. I love being on LCCMR. Seeing the projects, going on tours, which we didn't get to do, do, was amazing. And I've learned so much about things that happened in Minnesota that otherwise I wouldn't have. I didn't know there was rock snot. When I talk about that, people are like, what are you talking about? But it's a reality. And I don't believe it's something we funded, but it's something that's out there. Good thing I didn't have to touch it, because <laughs> I wouldn't have. But there's other animals and things that we learn about, different plants, different this, different that. It's just amazing to be able to go through and see these projects. But I don't always feel like the projects are across the board for everyone. We see a lot of research projects, and granted, research projects are needed, but sometimes you don't have the, the full you don't, you don't get the board support because some of these projects just aren't acceptable. And we're going to see a completely different bill in the Senate again, and here we go again. Here we go again. And a lot of these projects, these communities really rely on us to do. And I really had hoped this year that we would get a board approval for the bill, and it didn't happen. We're a couple, we're a couple short again. So that means we're not really too far out of the ball game in getting this passed. But I haven't seen a lot of work done to get it passed with a full board support. 
I didn't vote for it in committee, and I won't be voting for it today. And it makes me sad because there are a lot of projects which I really think are worthy, which gets Minnesotas out, which gets kids out, enjoying the communities that we have, enjoying the resources that we have. Instead, we're going to play, well, I like this better than, than I want your project game. And that's really distressing. These are good, a lot of these are good projects, but there's a lot of them we didn't do. A lot of these projects that mean a ton to communities, ton to Minnesotans. A lot of Minnesotans do go come out, especially the Metro folks, go out in the summertime especially to enjoy the resources that we have in greater Minnesota. How do I know that? Because it takes me two hours to get home. Because I can't take Highway 10, I can't take 94, you gotta take back roads. That's how I know that Minnesotans get out in greater Minnesota and do it. And sometimes I feel like some of those projects aren't funded because it isn't for the metro area. Well, guess what? A lot of these are for all Minnesota. A lot of these are for all Minnesota. So as I said before, I'm disappointed I'm not gonna be voting for this, but I do hope that when it comes to conference committee that there is a way that they can find a compromise and that we can fund the projects that mean the most for all Minnesotans. Thank you. Further discussion to the bill. I recognize the author of the bill, the member from Dakota, Representative Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and member. I think this is, members, this has been a good discussion. I do want to respond to just a few things before we vote. Um, you know, when Representative Heinzman asked me about one of the challenges, or what are the challenges in terms of the actual process, what has happened over the last several sessions is there are more and more capital investment projects that are coming into LCCMR. Let me be clear about that. There are more and more projects, capital investment projects, that are coming into LCCMR. Now why that is, I don't know, but there are more and more of them that come in. Those are, could be referred to as projects in your district. And so it becomes a me versus the we. So the bill in front of you is scores, the 17 members scoring it. There's things I like that didn't get scored high and there's things I don't like that got scored high. But we've all gone to school. We all get a passing grade. And that's what's in front of us. We're going by merit. We're going by those scores. Now what the other body is doing, they threw out a number of projects and put in things that didn't even have a bill. Or they're going to. That's what's in their committee. Maybe they'll correct. Maybe they'll have an opportunity to change in the floor. But there's things that weren't even presented to LCC Meyer that are going to be voted on in the Senate. There are things that weren't even bills that are going to be voted on in the Senate. There are projects, even Representative Eklund, this Prion project, they cut that in the Senate, right? They cut money from it. I want to go through some of the individual items. Uh, oh, and Representative Green, I was ready with the, I thought you were going to ask for the number of acres, so I actually have those. So since, uh, since we did the research, I just wanted to get it on the record. Uh, state parks and SNAs, 266 acres. Local park grants, so those aren't the state system, those are local parks, 89 acres. And then easements, so those are folks who are still paying property tax. You're buying uh, some of the rights for that uh, through RIM, 2,287 acres. Those state park and trail acquisitions, many of those are called inholdings. So in holdings, you may have, just think of a square, and maybe within that square there's a piece of property that's still privately held, and the owner's trying to sell it. Or maybe it's the heirs of the owner, and they want to sell that property. But they can't sell it unless we buy it. It's within the state park lines. So this in holdings, that's where the money goes. State trails, many of you have come forward with bills for designating state trails. That's the first step in having a trail. And then you have the acquisition that occurs. So you may have trails throughout the state that are missing a piece. 
you have a landowner just waiting to make that sale. Well, it takes the money dedicated for those trails to connect those trails. You can't use the trail if you don't have the connection on the state-designated trail. Local parks, again, that's a way to get some money to your local parks, not just the DNR. Efficacy of urban archery. I want to go back to the very important thing that Representative Eklund said. We are going to have to have more intense deer management in urban areas as CWD spreads into urban areas, suburban areas, and other rural areas around the state. So rather than relying on anecdote, when we're making decisions, and if any of you have ever been to a town meeting about bow hunting in a suburb, you know that it is a very critical issue that lots of people get involved in. So evidence is important. Not hearsay, not anecdote, not of what I heard from somebody, but evidence. And that's why the science is important. Blueberries, Representative Becker Finn highlighted that. But again, the genetic diversity of our wild blueberries is important. Without that diversity, without understanding that diversity, they can be susceptible to disease. If you have a very narrow, very narrow line of blueberries and a disease comes in, it could be wiped out with devastating impacts. Gut pile watching. You know, and I know many of you did not run here to be talking about gut piles. But, again, back to CWD. There is evidence that scavengers can move CWD. It may not affect them. It may affect some of them. But evidence is what we need. And Representative Heinzman, what you talked about with having hunters work with the university, that's exactly what the science does. It wants to work with hunters to see what they're seeing. And yes, that will cost money. Because you have to defend the evidence. You have to have the scientific method. You have to have the research. As Representative Eklund mentioned, research that gets published to make decisions. Because when we make decisions, we better be able to back them up. And having that scientific research is important. I lost track a little bit on a couple of the other ones. Uh, sharing the studies. So I mentioned earlier the great staff we have. Not everybody can go in the basement of the state office building and talk to the staff. Yes, we have the technology, but gosh, there's a lot of, a lot of families that go to the science museum. And they can interact and look up not what the LCCMR is doing, but what the money did, what the research did, where it went. I think, that, I think we have a responsibility to tell people what we did with their money. And I think the Science Museum is a great place to do that. I do want to highlight one additional project, and this was the highest ranking project of all. Representative Tice, I think we all agreed on this one. This was the unanimous one. $1.339 million dollars from the trust fund to the Commissioner of DNR for an agreement with the Conservation Corps of Minnesota, now we all know they do good work, to create a Veterans Service Corps program to accelerate natural resource restorations while providing workforce development opportunities for our state's veterans. That was the highest ranking project. That's in this bill over a million dollars. So we can point out the things we don't like. We could do that in any bill. But I'm asking you to consider the things that are good in here. There are things that are great in here. Prions, pollinators, PFAS, issues we've been dealing with a long time. Just because they've been in front of us a long time doesn't mean we've solved them. But this problem-solving bill helps. And I'd ask for your support as we go into conference. I know some of you won't vote for it. I'm asking you to consider it. Look at it, read it, and vote green 
for this environmental trust fund appropriation. Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll. Got it. Will the clerk please call the names of members who have not yet voted? And Davids. Davids votes no. Davids no. Feist. Feist. Aye. Feist. Aye. Aye. Gomez. Gomez, aye. Gomez, aye. Houseman. Houseman, aye. Houseman, aye. Heinrich. Heinrich, no. Heinrich, no. Thompson. 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 The clerk will close the roll. There being 72 ayes and 60 nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to.